What's up? <laughs> Where's our intro, Skip? What? You don't hear it? No. You don't Dalton, hear the can intro? you hear anything? You didn't hear the no, intro? No, I can't hear it. No, we're just sitting here hanging out, oh, quiet as anything, and we're oh, live, geez. so well, hi, you know everyone. What? How I'm, are I'm you? I'm going to say the hell with the intro. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here we are. It's Skip Happens, and right off the top, Skip Happens. <laughs> Skip <laughs> Happens, yeah. You, you know, I saw, you know, Dalton Dover's our guest tonight, and I can't wait to dig deep with this guy. Mm -hmm. uh, Welcome, you know, and I told Dalton. I told him off the air, Deb, he's a star in the making. He is mm -hmm. getting there, and he's, he's like, you. just hope it doesn't go too fast, but I want it to go fast. All right, Man, but... Y'all say hi to Dalton Dover. What's going on, buddy? Man, I'm just hanging out. I'm back here in Georgia with my family. Um, the Taste Rice store started la uh, last Thursday, so we just been hanging out. We got I got back home at like midnight last night, so I come in and I just been hanging out today, man. Me and the kids went fishing, and we just had a great day, man. Damn, I love oh, that. Nice. Did the bus like drive up to your door and just drop you off? Man, see, I wish it was like that, but it don't work like that. I wish I could snap <laughs> my fingers and be home. <laughs> So wait, can we like back up a little bit? Because usually Skip opens up to ask where you are. I don't yeah. know where you are. So you are in Georgia? Yeah, so I'm in right Georgia. I'm in, a, I'm in a very small town where I was born and raised here called Aragon, Georgia. Nice. And what's so that So if you don't here? know where that's at, like I'm probably, I don't know, probably about 45 minutes away from the Atlanta airport. Oh, all right. That's not so, too bad. You know, not too bad. Yeah, exactly. Not too crazy. Easy probably in, don't easy have out. the traffic issues that they have in Atlanta. Yeah, exactly. I can just go shoot straight up to the airport. There you go. Wow. Nice. Okay. I had it. They had have a field. whole mess of traffic there. Mm -hmm. Dude, I'm trying to get not crazy at times. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you've been there all your life, though, you said, right? Yeah, man. I've been here all my life, born and raised, man. So if if um, Deb and I are to make a trip to uh, Georgia and we, we go, to, let's say we start going in your town, we're heading in that direction. What road would we be on, first of all? So you would be on Highway 101. Okay. You'd be on Highway 101 going toward Rome, Georgia. Okay. So we're on Highway 101, and yep. now we enter your town. What's the first yep. thing we're going to see? The first thing you're going to see is just a little empty parking lot. It's not not great. It's a gravel, old gravel parking lot, and the old store used to be right there. Um, and it just, you know, you'll come on down a little bit. You'll see a Dollar General just kind of tucked back in the corner. You know? And we got a snack. Yeah, man, we got a snack shack. We don't have any red lights at all. Um, my town's literally no. like here to here. Well, you know, I, I have that a, though. I have a problem with your town. <laughs> and and I'll tell you why. There should be a sign saying you are entering the home of Dalton Dover. Season 16, <laughs> exactly. the voice contestant. Let's he go, put dude. this Maybe town on the map. So I have a problem Let's with go. that. They need to recognize you, dude. <laughs> Thank you, bro. <laughs> well, listen, you. So I was gonna joke around a little bit. I think if I read this correctly, you have like 11 million monthly listeners just on like Spotify. So I really think they need to get that sign up there sooner most, rather than later. Most definitely. Noticing, taking big notice to that because I'm sure it's gonna be 15 and 20 million before you know it. The way you're Thank going. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Absolutely. That sign needs to be up there. It needs to be lighted at night. It mm -hmm. needs to have some flags like the big American flag behind it. it just, I mean, that's it, man. That's what it's no, about. No, 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 no. It's, it's going to be Dalton Dover Highway. That's what they're going to do. <laughs> they're going to you change your Highway 101. There we go. <laughs> All there right. Go. Back to the music. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Back to the music. Back to the music. Back to the music. We're with Dalton Dover. So, anyways, buddy, all, all kidding aside, uh, yeah. you know, being on the voice and all that, let's let's go way back. Tell us about your beginnings. Yeah, dude. So I grew up um just like just grew up right here in Aragon. Um, you know, very like I said, man, it's a very small town. Everybody knows one another. Oh um, man, just and I started off in school and I always loved singing, dude. Like mm -hmm. I would be singing going walking down the hallway, sitting. I even got a pink slip one time for singing in class. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I'd come home and before TikTok and, you know, before TikTok come around or you before I even knew how to use YouTube, I'd get on Facebook and I would open up YouTube and I would sing covers, just some of my favorite songs. I'd pull the instrumentals up. I'd video them through a webcam and it was really awful then. But 
<laughs> man, I just found a really early passion for singing and performing for people. And um, yeah, dude, just yeah. church. Your, really, church yeah, I was really going to say, what about your grandpa in church? Yeah, man, like church, like that really squared it off, man. My grandpa had me singing right beside him um, since I was yay high, dude, you know, so um when I was my son's age, I was singing How Great Thou Art, Sweet Beulah Land, Amazing Grace, just mm. small Southern Baptist church, you know, nothing huge at all. Um, yeah, dude, we didn't even, we didn't even have to plug a guitar up or use a microphone in there. Really? It was that small? What, Man, maybe like 15, yes, 20 dude. people? It not, sometimes not even that. Really? Aww. Mm-hmm. What a small town. What's the, I wonder, the population, I believe, I think I looked it up. Well, I know I looked it up. It was 1700 or something like that. Yeah. Dude, like, little... yeah like when I tell you small town, dude, like it's small town. Small hey, town. That's a great way to raise a family, especially these days. So. Most definitely. Like, you know, mm-hmm. we love our small town vibes out here. I love yeah. coming back home. So mm-hmm. tell us about, um, you know, getting on The Voice, being there. Yeah. Now, you made it into the, was it the top 45 or something like that? Um, So I made it to the top 48, which is like 48. You got the battle rounds okay. and then you got the battle rounds. After the, when you get to the battle rounds, you're like, there's 48 contestants left. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I, my, my friend hit me up one day and they're like, yo, the voice is coming to Atlanta. You should go out there. You should audition mm-hmm. because if you go, you're going to make it. And I was like, oh, come on, guys. Like, what are the chances of me going out there mm-hmm. and actually making it? There's thousands of people that do this, you know. So what are the chances of Dalton going up there and making it on the voice? Well, I go up there. They put me in a room. And at that time, Chris Stapleton's Tennessee Whiskey. It was oh, like man. they just had got done performing that, so I went in there and I performed Tennessee Whiskey. It was an acapella, and they gave me a ticket. And like after that, I went back to Atlanta like three times or something, and then you know they sent me to LA. Really? So you, yeah, you went back incredible. three times. All right, so it was right there in Atlanta, but you went yep. three times, and then they finally said you're going to LA. Yeah, like there was a group of us that they sent to LA. For Were the you like going, audition. holy crap. Oh, dude, like, I'm just like, holy crap, like, how did this happen? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> at that time, you know, it's 2019. At that time, I'd never really experienced anything like that. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I was, I knew I could sing a little bit, but, you know, I didn't know myself as an artist. You know, I didn't know what kind of songs I was going to be writing in 2024. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I didn't know any of these things. I was new to everything. So, like, going in, I was nervous. Like, a- every singer there I thought was better than me. You know, so, like, I've definitely done a lot of growing and um, I spent a lot of time by myself there, you know. So um, when you're by yourself and you're passionate about something, I feel like you just you mm-hmm. hit it full speed and you just take it, you know. So coming from a small town, and I say this because my husband's from a small town and I had to really pull his teeth to get him to leave there. So how <laughs> did you feel? I mean, you're familiar with Atlanta because it's kind of in your backyard, but knowing that you had to really step out of your comfort zone and go to leave, you know, Georgia, leave Atlanta and go to this unknown entity. I mean, what in the world was your mind thinking? (laughs) Well, so I went out there by myself. It was me. Luckily at the airport, I met some friends. I'm sure you guys have heard of Andrew Janakis. Him and I were on the same season of The Voice. Um, I love Andrew to death, but Mm -hmm. I was walking into the airport and Andrew Janakis was sitting in there with his guitar. And I just assumed that he was going for the same thing that I was going for, right? So I'm like, hey, dude, what's up? We start conversation. I'm like, man, uh, he's like, I made it on The Voice. You know, I'm like, yo, well, I'm on The Voice too. What's up? You know, so um, that was one of the first friends I made. So the plane ride to L.A. and the plane ride back and the whole time I was there, Andrew Janakis and I were just tight the whole time. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Do you still keep in touch? Oh, uh, yeah. You know, we I think he has his own thing going on. And obviously sure. I have my own thing going on. So whenever we talk, we talk and we just know we always got each other's back no matter what. Mm-hmm. So what did you um you landed the record deal? Yeah. How did all that happen and what were you feeling? Dude, holy crap, man. So um I guess I'll start from the beginning there. Um mm-hmm. TikTok started happening and stuff, man. I started posting covers of just some of my favorite songs that I love to sing and um even some original stuff that I had recorded and put out before, you know, before my record deal or really before TikTok. Um, and dude, like, it just seemed like the fans on TikTok, even still today, man, like they've resonated and just loved what I've done. And, you know, like, I feel like I always try to be real and genuine. So I feel like, mm-hmm. you know, they all, them are the people that are like, man, I love this guy, you know? So I had a couple of videos go viral and my producer, Matt McVaney brought me into town and he's just like, man, um, I don't know. 
I don't know what's going to happen. It's not a promise that you're going ever going to get a record deal. Like, it's not a promise you'll ever see radio. But I know that we can find great songs, and I can, you know, you can sing your ass off. So like, I know that I can give you some quality stuff. Like, I would love to work with you. I love what you're doing. And dude, two weeks after that, we found Baby I Am, and you got a small town. Mm-hmm. And dude, from there, man, it's almost like everything just started elevating. And it's still going. Yeah, man, it's insane, dude. Like my mind is like. It's so overwhelming just because, like, coming from here, like, man, nothing like that ever happens. So when it does happen to somebody, it's almost like everybody mm-hmm. celebrates it. You know, it feels oh, yeah. really good because I dreamed of this shit, dude. Like, yep, I yep. dreamed of being here. I dreamed of doing this, talking to you yep. guys, meeting you, yep. Skip. You know, like, yep. I dreamed of doing this. So, yep. Well, me too. It's cool. You know, when, yeah. we meet, when we meet an artist like you, it's so easy to have a conversation. And it's just we connect. And I know you're living your dream. I'm doing mine. Deb's with yeah. me here on the podcast. You know, this is yeah. something we've always wanted to do. And it's, we know the feeling to a certain extent, but yeah. I don't know if we know the feeling all the way because you must have to maybe walk away from it just for a little bit, just to go, holy cow, what the hell's happening? This is crazy. Yeah. It's my yeah. dream, but I got to be <laughs> careful. Yeah. You yeah, know? dude. Every every single day, man. Like, it's very rare that I kind of step away from it and look at it from the outside looking in. Just come. Sometimes, like, that's really hard for me to do. Like, I love like being on top of my stuff. From the time I wake up in the morning to the time I go to sleep for the last three years has been like, okay, giving up on that is like my mindset. Is just like, okay, giving up on that is like an amazing song. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to put it out. But what's coming after that? You know, like. Right. What's coming after what's coming after giving up, you know, what's coming after what's up next, you know, and mm. I always want to be able to give everybody what they want, like, especially my fans do. Like, these people have, like, rode for me for so long, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. now, like, not only am I experiencing all this, like, they're also experiencing it, you know, so. Exactly. But, like, dude, I get messages all the time, like, man, I followed you from the beginning. I'm like, damn, like, the beginning was that I'm sitting on a bed in Rockmart, Georgia, laying on my stomach across the bed saying <laughs> George Strait. You know, like, <laughs> I'm gonna have are those all still posted somewhere because I'm gonna have to go back and find those. No, I shouldn't have even said that. Oh, I, I love that because you know how many artists will say, Oh, what right? Skip the first song was just oh, I can't believe yeah. I even sang that, yeah. or my first video, or my first posting was just absolutely awful. I can't believe I did that. What, so, what was your very first song? Very first, go, what what can you remember? I realize you know where you are now, but let's go way, way, way back. Yeah, first song was what? Man, the first song. Okay, do we mean the first song that like I fell in love with? I was like, man, country music is what I want to do. Okay, yes. yeah. Let's start with that, and then okay. tell us the first song you actually put out to the public, whether it be on social media okay. or. Whatever. All right, love that. So my grandpa's a truck driver. He's logged all of his life, man. And Mm-hmm. When we was younger, and like some kids' summers, they go to the beach, you know, they go to the Smoky Mountains or, you know, wherever they may go on vacation for spring break or the summer break. Well, me and my cousins and my brother, we would go work in the woods with my grandpa and like fill up five gallon buckets with diesel in it. You know, if they run out of fuel in the woods or something, you know, we'd run them buckets. If they needed tools, we'd go get mm-hmm. tools. Wow. One day, my grandpa had to take a load of wood to the mill. Man, and he turned on Don't Close Your Eyes by Keith Whitley. And I just remember, holy crap, man. Like, mm-hmm. I thought to myself, like, I don't know what that guy's doing in that song. I, did, I don't even know who Keith Whitley is. I don't even know what Don't Close Your Eyes means at this point. But I was like, man, like, if whatever he's doing in that song, that's what I want to do. Like, I don't know what it is, but that's what I want to do. And, man, like, it's been insane, dude. Just got spoken to right then and there. This and is it. that's what broke you through on The Voice. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. And, like, and that's the look. crazy thing. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. That, Don't that's Close Your Eyes was the first song on the list. And I was like, well, boys, I know my song. <laughs> it was meant to be at that point. <laughs> so what was your first public song that you released um, knowing that this was a career you wanted to get into and you had to start yeah. getting yourself out there? So after The Voice, uh, when I got eliminated, like, obviously, like I'm, you got young Dalton, don't know what he's doing. He was mm-hmm. working in the woods, selling snow cones, you know, like whatever he, whatever he had to do to get by. Right. Mm-hmm. So when I got off the show, I went back to work and man, like, I just got to thinking to myself, I'm like, I don't need to be here. You know, like I need to go, I need to be writing songs. I need to be putting songs out. I need to be like 
getting ready for this. Cause this is what I want to do. Like there's no, there's no plan B, you know? So I went home and I wrote a song called that ain't her plans. And that was one of the first songs that I put out. I wrote it with, uh, I wrote it with my buddy, Michael Goss, and he's from this area, but I put that song out and it wasn't the greatest song, man. But now that I look, but go back and listen to it now, I'm just like, man, dude, like that's insane. How much like somebody can grow just, or mm-hmm. you know, it's just insane. I don't know. It's crazy. I'm just so well, thankful. It came from your heart though. That's yeah. what's the most important part. For sure. hundred percent. So yeah, that's amazing. And that's why it's great because it most came from your heart. That's all there is to it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. How often do you get to write? Man, I have this year has been weird. I've not really got to write a lot of songs. I snuck into a writer's room about two Wait, months. Oh, ago. You snuck into a writer's room? So I come into town. Nobody <laughs> knew I was in town. I just called a couple of writers and I was like, some of my best friends are, hey, you like, I'm in town. I don't have, nobody knows I'm here. I don't have nothing to do. Let's write some songs. And we, we wrote a song called You Need a Rock that I'm really, really excited for everybody to hear. That that was it, huh? Yeah, dude. Like, and, and when are we going to be able to hear that down the road? I would assume. Dude, I'll text. I'll text it to you. I'll text it to you and see what you think. Oh, I would love to hear it, and I'd give you my honest opinion. Yeah, dude. And, I'll and, text it to you. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, do you think you will be making the move to Nashville? Man, you know, it's definitely in my plans for the near future. Um, I think right now, like, it's working out fine with me living in Georgia, and I'm able to you know, like be on the road as much as I have to. Like I'm in town, like I'm, I'm leaving actually in the morning, hit it back into Nashville. So okay. I'm already in Nashville more than I'm home. So when it gets to a point where I really, you know, need to be there, um, I'll be there. But right now I, don't, I really don't want to change the atmosphere for my babies. And right. um, I just want to be present for, you know, they're growing up here and I don't want to take them out of, I don't no, want to take them. Absolutely. hundred percent. hundred percent. Yeah. I'm three hours there. away from town, so it's nothing too crazy. No, no, that's that's not too crazy. What's it like now? We we talked about it in the beginning. This is your first big tour. You are yeah. heading out with Chase Rice. We love yeah. Chase Rice, and to be on <laughs> that same stage or that same bill, that same show, and you're going to be here in Central New York come uh, yes. the end of June. Really yeah, excited dude. about that. But what's it like? Do you guys hit the road on Thursday and then you have to be somewhere Friday, Saturday, Sunday? Or what's yeah, that dude. like? So kind of getting ready for this tour, I was a little nervous. You know, I was out on the road with Priscilla back in October. And mm-hmm. It kind of gave it kind of warmed me up a little bit. I'm like, okay, I can do this. Like, this is a blast. I'm meeting fans. I'm singing my favorite songs every night. Like, I can do this. That was the first time I ever went out on the road. So coming into Chase's tour, Obviously, you know, like I'm expecting, like there's gonna be a little bit more. There's gonna be more people here. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna reach more people doing this. So, like, I want to make sure the songs that I'm singing every night are perfect. Stuff like that is what goes through my head. And then it just makes it easier when I go out and Chase is a great human being and his whole team are great, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But dude, the fans are wild. Dude, Chase's fans are so much fun. So, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead, dude. Mine, mine is, you know, I, I love all the background stuff. So, so, uh, do you get to rehearse? Like, do you guys go to somewhere to rehearse your set that you're going to be on the, like, do you rehearse with Chase? You rehearse on your own. How does that setup go? So uh, we go into town a couple of days before we head out for the road mm-hmm. and we rehearse eight hours a day for two days. Like, we rehearsed last Tuesday and Wednesday and headed out on the road on Thursday. So, okay. you know, yeah. And my band, luckily, like the group of guys that I play with, they're all so talented and they go home and they do their homework and like, they just, they, 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 they want it just as bad as I do. Yeah. So everybody, it's almost like we're just a huge family, but also a big team on stage, you know? Oh yeah. Now you were team Blake, right? Yeah. Yeah. Team now, Blake. Do, do you still talk to Blake at all? Or obviously Blake knows who you are and what you're doing. Is there right. still any communication between the two of you? Man, you know, like Blake has kind of popped in here and there, but, I'm not, me and Blake don't talk on the regular, but you yeah. know, like it's kind of crazy just because like, even though I say that sometimes I'm like, damn, like he's watching me, you know, like he sees what mm-hmm. I'm doing. Like the grand, like, he invited me to my grand Ole Opry debut. And like, Aww. that was like, that was huge for me because like I got eliminated right. off the show and then like I'm playing this bar in Nashville, like never thought I would ever even be there, you know? And then Blake's face pops up on the back screen and you got to think, man, like, 
<laughs> I remember when I heard Austin for the first time, and then it was mm -hmm. one of my still to this day, it's one yes. of my favorite songs ever. Mm -hmm. Awesome. The one that so got Blake, it started. I turn around and I see Blake yeah. Shelton's face on the back screen, dude. I absolutely freak out. <laughs> <laughs> so wait a second. So are you just playing at um I have to vision this. You're playing at a ramp. Were you scheduled to play at a bar down there? Were you which is old red, it? which is Blake's bar? Oh yeah. right. Okay. Right. Okay. Oh, that's so cool. Okay. I thought yeah. you were at some other bar. I didn't realize you were at his bar, so I was yeah. trying to put it all together. Yeah. Oh, that is so cool. You know, Dalton, you're living proof that we watch these reality shows, these these mm -hmm. different shows, and it, yeah. you're proof that you don't have to be in that top three, that top five. There yeah, is sure. so much talent. And how, I mean, I know Carrie Underwood won it back in the day, and of course she's you know, superstar now, but, uh, and you're on your way, but it's, there's others that maybe were in the top 10 now that have been banging out songs and Most they're on the radio and it's just crazy. You're living proof that you can do, if you put your heart into it, you know it, you give it Most all you got, you can do it. Most definitely do. That's, that's it, dude. That's mm -hmm. it. That's all it's ever been for me. I've just always trusted in God and it's always moved forward, man. No matter as many times as I've ever heard, no, or as many times as somebody's just like maybe look over mm -hmm. me, dude. I just I always want to just keep going. Mm -hmm. I'll never stop. What about mom? Dude, like she's in there watching TV right now, dude. She's having a blast. <laughs> <laughs> she's having such a blast, man. You know, they're all so proud of me. And honestly, dude, I couldn't ask for a better family, Absolutely. friends. Oh man, just I've just met so many amazing people yeah. um that just support me so much out here. It's it's so cool. Well, I gotta say, you know, the the day you came through town and we went to lunch. Uh, just to get to know you was amazing. And then we sat in the car afterwards and we listened to some more of your music and I was totally blown away. I said, this guy, there's no doubt. I'm not just saying this. We talked to a lot of artists and there's a lot of great talent out there, but you just, it's like, wow. And I remember talking to your label saying, let's get this guy out there. Let's go. Yeah. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> yeah, let's dude. go. Thank what are you waiting for? And for dude, a radio guy so to say fun, that man. there's something, uh, something good about thank it. Thank you, so. dude. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, will you do me a favor? Um, what's that bag you got there? Will you hold up that bag of whatever you're reading? I want Deb oh. to see this. Deb, <laughs> look. Hey, dude. Oh, you Skittles. Know. Oh, my God. Right here, you are going to be running all over the house tonight. <laughs> That's why well, I love Skittles. So when you come to town, I'll have a bag of Skittles for you. Mm. Don't worry. Skittles and we'll do, we'll do a toast. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like that with M&Ms. You put a bag of M&Ms in front of me, they are not going to last. So, Skittles are so good, not. though. I'm right there with him when it comes to Skittles. Oh what, what what other jobs have you held during your lifetime up to this point? Man, dude, I've worked a lot of crappy jobs. <laughs> um, let's see. I worked at a poultry plant here in Rockmart, Georgia. And it's named Tip Top. Tip Top. Tip Top. Tip -top. Okay. Tip Top. Yeah. And like, you go in, and it's a, it's a poultry plant, man. They handle oh. raw chicken and cooked okay. chicken. They don't kill chickens there. Oh, they okay. just have the raw and cooked chicken. It's a big, it's a big company. And then I was, I was a table buster. I busted tables here at a restaurant. Mm -hmm. And then let's see, I've sold snow cones. I worked in the woods. Like you, know, you were operating a skitter, right? Yeah, I was operating a skitter. I was running saws. You know, I was ultimately learning everything on the job. Deb, do you know what a skitter is? Is it uh, that thing that picks up like pallets? No, that's a skit. That's that's maybe a. What is it? A forklift. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> forklift. That's the. Yeah, I guess no, that's a skitter will take a forklift and just like crush it. Yeah. Oh, well, he picks crap. up probably if I if I you were working in the woods and I think you're picking up logs. Yeah, right? like you're talking thirty ton. Yeah. Behind you, big yeah. ass logs. Oh, my God. oh yeah, dude. Big like if it, if it fell on your foot, you wouldn't have a foot. You're done. No, you're done. Or if you go upside of a hill and you turn your skitter the wrong way, your fault. You're flipping. Do you ever flip? Oh my Man, I've been close, but I've never <laughs> flipped. I was always very conscious when I was on there. I always put my seatbelt on, make sure I was safe because I don't. If I'm, that's that's the number two most dangerous job in the world. I believe it. Uh, you know yeah. what, though, you don't have to worry about that crap anymore. <laughs> no, yeah, now somebody not. else has to do it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, man, I definitely go back out there though. I'd, I'd go back out there right now if I had to. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Those jobs, I think, are important because it does ground you. It does show you or shows all of us that, you know, there's out there's people out there that just have to do those jobs Most for their definitely. life or whatever. And I think it yeah. really keeps us, checks us in with reality when we have to go through those stages of life. 
And then exactly. you appreciate everything you have now. You know, like, so. that's so crazy you say that because I was talking to somebody earlier, man. And, like, when I say, like, my, how crazy everything is for me right now, like, dude, four years ago, man, four years ago, Skip, dude, I didn't even know how I was going to pay my water bill, bro. Yeah. Isn't that weird? You know, like, yeah. I didn't even know how I was going to pay my rent. You know, like, I'm yeah. still, like I'm asking my mom for $20 every week just to get yep, by. Yep, you know? yep, yep, yep. Oh, wow. So, I like, do. like, I get it, man. Like, yeah. I get it. Well... You know, something to think about, and this is a true story. Way back in the day, Jason Aldean almost had his truck repossessed. He couldn't afford he anything. Yeah. You know, now obviously all that's turned around, but it's a true story. Right. Way back in the day when he was first starting out, they were ready to take everything he had. Yeah. You know, which, you know, right. but to artists like you give it, give so much to uh, mm -hmm. go after your passion and your dream and look yeah. at and it's It's turned around for you, which is a good thing. Most Which definitely. is a really good thing. Um, yeah, I was, I was going to say something. For, oh, so, Deb, did you see this? Did you see who's on the cover of this? I have not yet. Oh, how awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. Man, did this that just was come crazy. out? Uh, no, it, actually, it came out during CRS. Yeah. Oh, then I is that the I'll, one they passed out? Because I have it yes, in my... Yes, and Dalton okay. kept walking by, picking up copies. Did <laughs> you really? Had to. I had to get one from for my you. mom, my grandma, my grandpa. <laughs> I got one to put up in my like I keep a basket of like all my tour badges or like yeah, I was gonna ask that about that. Yeah. And I keep them so that like when my kids get older, like if something ever happens Absolutely. to me, they'll have that always. You're gonna have to get your own room to mm -hmm. put your plaques up, you know, when you get Dude, certain most awards. Definitely got to. Got it's just that's going to be that room. A couple of guitars hanging on the wall. I've got one behind me. I don't know how to play it, but there's one there and one on the other <laughs> side of the room. Well, but, don't we have a future like new or CMA artist of new artist, artist on the mm -hmm. horizon? There's all these awards mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I could see him yeah. filling. Will you with. will you be at the ACM awards? Man, I, I, not, I heard that I was going to be there. And I, I think really, you will really be. hope I'm going to be there. I think you wow. will be, and you'll be walking that red carpet. Let's go, dude. That would be amazing. And, and when you go up and they say, look who it is. It's Dalton. You know, Dalton Dover. Dalton, how's it going? Hey, you know, I just exactly. want to say one thing. Skip happens. Yes, I'm exactly. doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I have to ask you, the first CRS. Yeah. And anybody that's anybody is there. Yeah. People are coming up to you. They're shaking your hand. You know, they're giving you props. Rightfully so. You have to perform in front of all these people. Yeah. How nerve wracking is that? Um, man, you know, I was really lucky that when I got there, I was like, "Damn, I'm not gonna know anybody." Like, I'm about to be nervous as crap. But then I got there, and I'm and it hit me. I'm like, "Well, I just got off a promo tour, so." I met mm -hmm. a lot of people out, you know, so like, I'm going to, I'm like, okay, so I'm going to know some people, mm -hmm. you know, I guess I'm not going to go out here and just be a stranger. Yep. Right. Yep. But dude, when I played the ramen, man, I was so nervous, dude. Mm -hmm. Everybody was out there. Dude, Vince Gill was oh. sitting side stage. I was going to ask oh, you Oh, I about know. That. We were watching him. We yeah. were watching that. And you yeah. know what? Vince was watching every single Everyone. artist listening every single one of us dude. every single one and you look at somebody like vince who i've listened to all my life and yeah just to see him it never gets old but i think i don't i'd be shaking like there's no tomorrow if dude, i had it if i had a walk out there knowing oh, holy crap that's vince okay i, I was so cool. i gotta do my thing you know yeah he was so sincere, though. Like when he was watching all of you guys perform, yeah. I I felt like I was reading his mind. Like he's sitting there, really supporting you all, yeah. and looking back to when he was mm -hmm. in those shoes yes. and admiring all of you guys' courage and strength. And I Most and that. when he came out on stage and he voiced basically those things, I just mm -hmm. I just mm -hmm. felt it. Like he radiates yeah. that around people. But and it was it was really cool because. About two months, about a year and a half ago, me and my me and my producer, the guy Matt McBenny that I was talking about earlier, mm -hmm. he um, he, me and him got together and we covered "Go Rest on That Mountain" yeah. and a couple mm -hmm. other songs. But "Go Rest on That Mountain" was my favorite cover to do. I'm mm -hmm. singing it at so many funerals and man, like it's just yeah. always been a song like that. If I ever had the opportunity to do, I always wanted to do it. Well, 
we've not released it yet because I wanted to ask Vince Gill himself if he would like sing on it with me. Mm. So after the show was done, I walked up to Vince and I'm just like, man, like, I'm such a huge fan. Like, I know you probably think I'm fanboying right now, and I probably am just a little bit, but like, I'm such a huge fan. And um, I was just wanting to know that I, you could tell me no if you want to. And this is what I'm telling this guy, dude. I was like, you can say no if you want to. And then I was like, I, I recorded Go Rest on That Mountain a while back, and I just wanted to know if you would sing on it with me. And I was expecting him to say, oh, man, I can't. But he was like, dude, here's take my number. Call me. I'm like, you can call me anytime. I'm available all the time, right? So my mind was blown at that. So the next day I called him, and he didn't answer. Well, the next week, we're sitting in the living room at my grandma and grandpa's house. I was home for a couple of days and uh -huh. I'm just like, man, well, Vince told me to call him. So if I call him right now, my grandpa's going to freak out if Vince Gill answers the phone and I talk to him. <laughs> well, I call Vince and he's like, Dalton Dover, what's up, dude? And we're oh just, my, God. my grandpa's sitting here mind blown, like, dude. <laughs> and um, Vince is like, dude, I, you crushed that cover. I would love to get on it with you and sing it. And then he goes on to tell me like, it took him 30 years to like, it took Vince 30 years to write the third verse of Go Rest on That Mountain and he wanted to send it to me. Wow. Yeah. Wow. wow. That's, uh, you going to do it? <laughs> dude, what? Of course. Of course. When? When is the big? I mean, I'm just waiting, dude. I don't know. Like, His I producer know, like, will set it all up for him. Yeah. Wow. So, so you already pre-record, did you already record that song? I guess that's my question. Yeah, I've already recorded it and it's mm -hmm. just ready for Vince's BGVs or he can do the second mm -hmm. verse, whatever mm -hmm. he wants to do. Wow. So there's Dang. another business question I have to ask, but I'll uh -oh. wait till we're offline. So I'll See, I'm you. not, she's the serious <laughs> one when we do the podcast. I'm like all over the place. <laughs> I know. She's like well, I mom. love, I love <laughs> all the background stuff and how she things does. get to where they are. So yeah. You know, so all right. So, so if you're if you like a song from, we'll use this as an example. You love this song. Are you you recorded it, but don't you have to go through and get all licensing and all that before you could do that, or you just record it and don't release it until you have all that? Honestly, I, know you I don't even. To... I don't even know. <laughs> I really have no idea. The artist wouldn't know. It's up to those other people, your team that take they take care of all that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, but you just tell like your producer you want to sing that song and they get it all set up for you. Exactly. I'm like, man, I would okay. love to cover this song. Hence, I do. Let's do it. That could be cool to put out later. Okay. Absolutely. That's awesome. That was, uh, yeah. you know, it was many years ago, but that's the song they played at my dad's funeral. Yeah. So, that's wow. a great song. It was great, great, wow. song. great song. Great song. Great song. Oh, great, I can't great, wait to hear your song. version of it. For sure. I'll have to send it to you guys. Absolutely. Would love Absolutely. to hear it. How do you handle negative feedback if you get any at all? I don't know how, why man, you would, but. Um, you know, I've had my fair share of negative comments or negative just whenever I'm out, mm -hmm. but dude, look, man, I don't, haters don't bother me at all, dude. I love them. I love my haters, man. You, <laughs> I look at it. If, if you have haters, you know, they're paying attention to you. You're doing something right. Exactly. You know, yeah. exactly. um, man, I keep them closer than I do. I keep my enemies yeah. closer than none. Yeah. Yeah. It's like working in radio. We get somebody that bitches about the radio station. I'm like, cool. They're listening. I love it. Exactly. <laughs> you know, absolutely. Or else they wouldn't be bitching about something. Most so. definitely. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know why? She's mad because I swore. That's what that language, was. Right language. There. Language. <laughs> what did I tell what you? I do to my kids. I do Good to thing my kids. she didn't come <laughs> on earlier. <laughs> yeah, I heard you a few times earlier. I figured oh, I'd tell God. you after the show. <laughs> did, can you... um? How about, have you had any really challenging moments in your career and how did you overcome them? Man, you know, the most challenging thing that I've had in my career so far has been being true to my, not really being true to myself, but almost like, almost want to like be, I want to be the best, you know, like singing, guitar playing, whatever it may be, I want to be the best. So. I, I'm in my head a lot and I'm an overthinker and the biggest and the biggest thing that I've had to work on is, you know, knowing that we're all going to make mistakes. We're all in this to win. And like, dude, you just got to like be true to yourself and always mm -hmm. just grind it out and put out great music and make great relationships and be kind always. Um, and like, dude, um, that's definitely been one of the biggest things I've had to overcome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you hope your listeners take away from your music? Um, dude, like, 
I'm from American Georgia. Like you come here, like do we, we do redneck shit, and you know, like <laughs> go ahead, Deb. <clears throat> sorry, oh, see, I'm sorry. You just <laughs> it out. But you know, dude, whenever whenever it's somebody listens to my though. music, I'll, I would I, I would expect them to say that, you know, like damn, this guy right here is real, genuine, and authentic as it gets. You know, like, and that's what that's how I write my songs. You keep a close eye on all those numbers on TikTok and Facebook and Insta <laughs> and all that. Do you do that, or you have somebody that does that? No, I do it all. You do it all. You and do you res- want to know? Yeah, yeah. Do you, you respond know? to those that comment? Most definitely, I try to. Yeah. You know, like it's if, cool. If the comment is like, if, if the comment, if I'm just scrolling through, I don't normally like looking through my comments, but if I do, and I see a comment where somebody was like showing love or, you know, seen my show or something like that, I'll definitely drop in and say, hey, you know. I can't wait to see your show in June. Because we'll get to see a full show, not just a Yeah, let's songs. go. I'm so excited. And we're each bringing bags of Skittles. Let's okay. go. We love Skittles. <laughs> I have That'll them at be... work. I know. I'm not drinking no beer. I'm just going to eat Skittles. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's fine. In, ex- in exchange for a photograph, I'll bring Skittles. <laughs> Do you have any uh, pre-show rituals or any superstitions that uh, you can talk about man not really but just do your thing before i step up on stage um you know i pray to god that my family's safe while i'm not home Mm -hmm. i pray he keeps my band safe while we're out on the road and myself and that every fan in there gets their dollars worth from from the gift that he gave me awesome wow that is awesome so So, um what do you drive dude i got a 2018 tahoe nice so when you drive around town how is it when you drive around town that people go, Dalton, that's Dalton? Especially if my windows are down, pro- almost at every red light. Yeah? How very cool is that? It's so cool, man. And and what's cranking out of those speakers? Giving up on that, baby. Yeah? <laughs> over and over yeah. again. Over, man, they're blasting it. Yeah. So uh, if you were to listen to something else, what do you think you'd be listening to? Oh, man. I love, like... I've been like listening to like this rapper. His name's The Baby, or Lil, and oh, I yeah. like, and I yep, like, yep, 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 and I like Lil Baby too. But I love them guys. I think they're funny when I, they're. I love listening to their songs. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. and then in country music, dude, I, I love Parker McCollum. Mm-hmm. I really love Hardy. Obviously, I love Morgan, Luke Combs. All them guys are definitely coming through my speakers. Mm-hmm. Is there anybody else that you would love to be on tour with if you were given that opportunity? We know you're going out with Chase, and we know that yeah. you'd love to collaborate with uh, Vince, but yeah. if it's like, well, maybe a Luke Combs or somebody like that. Dude, like, that's that would be a dream tour for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To be able to, you know, be support for the Luke Combs tour. That would be the dream for me, for sure. Just because I've looked up to Luke for so long, and mm-hmm. um, he really inspires me he's one of the biggest artists like today that has inspired me Mm. and um yeah they definitely would yeah you know i love the fact that you go way back you go way back with some of this country and some you know those that got country to where it is today yeah Um, you love that stuff and it's just amazing that you do that it just and your covers are just really really cool um I kind of thinking about that. I kind of lost my train of thought here a little bit, but uh, I'm just thinking about, you know, the voice and what you did to get on that and the other covers that you've done and, uh, you know, everything from what you've done, Tennessee whiskey, you've done uh, Stapleton, you uh, other Stapleton songs, of course. Yeah, dude. Do you have uh, a, you play covers during your set? Usually do you pick? No, we do this cool. We do this cool cover. This Alicia Keys song called if I got you. Oh and yeah, my, and, and my keyboard player, Mike. Well, he's he's a utility player. He plays for his name's Tyler. He'll get on his keys and he'll just do some really pretty stuff. And we'll go into the Alicia Keys cover. And man, that's kind of been a hit at our shows, man. Everybody loves it. Did you do that okay. in Nashville at CRS? Yeah, I've done it um, at Amazon Heat. There you go. That's I knew. Yes, yeah. yes, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. That's where were we at Amazon Heat. I don't remember. We got there late, Deb. That was okay. the, that was the alcohol talking, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah. I had to go yeah. down to bar lines and pry her off the stool and, and to get her up to Amazon <laughs> Heat. I'm just saying. No, no, no. It's not at all. Yeah. We're just, you know, you know, as you know, I mean, you're on mm-hmm. the go, shaking hands and just go, yeah. go, 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 go. It's the same thing yeah. for the radio side of things. 
because yeah, we sure. want to be at so many different places at at the same time. Most Deb right. was getting invites. I was getting invites. Of course, Amazon Heat and, and all that. It was just crazy. Right. But yeah, that's where I did see that. I was there. For that. Yeah, that was really the first time I played it out. Now, these guys that you play with, have, yeah. you, have they been with you since the get-go? Man, my bass player's been with me since the very beginning. Right. Um, everybody else is just kind of salt and peppered in throughout the years. But the band that I have now, like these guys are the real deal. Um, they love what I do. They're like, they're fans, they're, su they're supporters of me. They show me so much love, man. And then they go up on stage and are just rock stars, dude. And, um, this is the band That's I feel so like awesome. is going to be for a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very, very awesome. That's how you know it feels like family. Most oh, yeah, you, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I heard you made a visit to Big D and Bubba recently. Yes. Yeah. Love those guys. Of course, they're our morning show, so we had you on. And uh, I, I know Christine uh, says uh, that you're awesome. Heard you on yeah. Big D and Bubba last week. So let's go, dude. That it was really incredible because growing up loving country music and like you like see all these guys like Jason Aldean, mm -hmm. Cole Swindell, you know, like all these guys that went through there, you know. So Very like. Cool. I don't yeah. know. And I just seen it. I was like, damn, I'm going on Big D and Bubba. I thought that was really good. That's, that's cool. <laughs> it's been around for a while, you know? Yeah. 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 You know what? It's I mean, you got to take advantage of all those, too, whether it's Big for D sure. and Bubba, whether it's Bobby Bones. I mean, get on those yeah. morning shows and get yourself out there. Most uh, definitely. You know, which is just the thing to do. So, you know, it's been very generous of you to spend this much this amount of time with us here tonight. Oh, dude, yeah. man. Thank you for having me, man. For sure. Uh, you're just, you know, you're the real deal. You Thank are you, the that real means deal. the world for real, man. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And we will bring <laughs> you Skittles. <laughs> Let's go. I need Skittles as we speak. There you go. I know. They, now <laughs> you're going to make me want Skittles. <laughs> uh, have you been at, wait a minute, Roger Johnston is, I don't know if you can see the comments at all, but Roger is actually one of the official photographers for the venue that you're going to be playing at in june okay he goes see him at kegs before you know it. oh okay i see what he's saying okay we'll see you at kegs before you know it in other words it's right around the corner so, <laughs> let's go yeah let's go we'll have a lot of fun that night we'll have we'll Dude, have I a good time wait, what what is uh tell us about your set you go on before chase you put what is it a 20 minute set what is it we do we do 30 minutes we do 30 minute knots and 45 minute knots i got you so we you. go in, um, we obviously we've rehearsed our set multiple times. So we know, we know these songs from the back of our hands and we just go from that and we build the show and we want to like build moments in the show. And man, like I got to say, man, from going on tour Priscilla to kind of growing through those couple months and then starting this chase rice tour, man, like we put so much thought into our songs and our song selection, the song uh, placement, Oh man, we just have fun, dude. It's just it's rocked up, man. We have a well, we, we are so looking forward to it. Man, I can't wait to be with you guys, dude. Well, you know, I will mark my kind. calendar. Yeah, she's now writing it down. Even though I've told her a few times, she is now making it over. <laughs> so, well, once yes, I'll have to make sure it gets from here to there. Yes. <laughs> I she don't will. schedule anything. I don't write anything no. down. So that's my problem. And she, she'll she tell you that. So, you know, before we let you go, what yeah. advice would you give to anybody that's trying to do what you're doing and have done? Man, the only thing that I can do, the only thing that I've done is um, stay true to yourself. Never forget who gave you the talent to be able to sing and to be able to play music. Mm -hmm. um, dude, just grind it out, dude, because it's not easy. But it's so rewarding when stuff like this happens. You know, like, it's so rewarding to know that, like, I've worked my butt off all these years from playing for th two people to three people. Um, and man, if I can do it, dude, man, and I take it from Jelly Roll, man, like, mm -hmm. if Jelly Roll can do it, like, we can do it. You know, like, Jelly Roll, like, that's my people, dude. I love Jelly Roll, man. And, like, Who doesn't? You know, like, dude, like, when I see his story, it inspires me so much. And I would just tell somebody, like, if they don't know who Jelly Roll is, don't listen to his music before you listen to his story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and like, good point. You know, just believe, believe in God, dude. Believe in God. Believe in yourself, and just do, just grind, man. Just don't go. stop. You just do go. have to grind. You can't don't look, look back, you look ahead, and, and just, just keep go going. look ahead. Yeah, that's what Dalton Dover has done. And yeah. believe me, the whole mm -hmm. way he's had the skittles. So I'm just saying. And I've been just like this. 
Uh -huh. so, how, how many are, uh, how far gone is the bag? Dude, my kids were eating on it earlier, and I walked by, and I was like, hey, there's some Skittles, man. <laughs> I mean, you know, you could probably see a little in there. Oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I got enough for a couple of days. Dalton Dover's been with us tonight, uh, with us here on Skip Happens tonight. And uh, dude, you're awesome. We wish you a lot of luck. Um, I know we're going to see each other really soon, and uh, I'd also look forward to seeing you on that red carpet when the ACMs roll around. I know you'll be going through there. And well, let's skip go. Happens. Um, I can't play, man. I'll send you a Skip Happens hat, then you'll have to wear it. Let's go, dude. Let's is, go. That hat is cool. What is that one you got on? Um, this is a nothing fancy hat. This is a brand that Hardy wears, man. And okay. I was at a show. I played a radio show, and there was a fan there, and this dude, like, he loved the Lonely Dime Hat Company hat that I had on. Mm -hmm. And they're my buddies at Lonely Dime. They support me so much, and they send me hats and stuff. So I was like, well, man, give me your hat, and I'll take this one. Man, ever since the fan gave me this one, dude, I love it, and I just wear it everywhere. Yeah, they're cool. They're cool. Now, the other yeah. hat you had looked like a, a cigarette box. Um, yeah, that's um, that is my uh, that's my buddy in New Mexico's hat company, and they make all those hats. You must have more uh -huh. hats than you know what to do with. Oh, dude, I have so many hats. <laughs> <laughs> mm. How do you decide which one to wear? You just reach in and grab one. I go, I shut my eyes and go, any, meeny, mom. Whichever one I <laughs> All right, Dalton like Dover, um, you were going to say something, Deb? Oh, no, no. I'm just oh, laughing okay. at the hat story. I yeah. love it. I love it. Dalton mm -hmm. Dover's been with us here on Skip Happens tonight. Uh, they can get your music if they go to what? Is it Dalton Dover Music dot com? Dalton Dover underscore music on Instagram and Dalton Dover okay. on Facebook. You'll see the little bitty blue check mark. And I didn't pay for it either. Mm -hmm. so. Oh, my son is chiming in. He's go. He goes, "Boo!" That's Zachary. <laughs> that's that's my that's my son. I don't know. He kind of <laughs> does. Man, weird. dude, thank y'all so much for having me. Absolutely, Adult and Dover. Everybody, check the music out. He's got a, another song climbing the charts, and uh, of course, you may recognize him from the Voice back in the day. And now he's on, like I said, the country music charts, and uh, he's going to be a big star. And mark my mm -hmm. word, that. Mm -hmm. That song will be coming out with Vince Gill, number one. Uh -huh. Number two, you will be doing a show with Luke Combs. Uh -huh. Let's go, Let's I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Dalton, I'm telling you right now, that is going to happen. Let's go, dude. All right, we're there with you. Dalton Dover, everybody. Dalton, thanks for joining us here tonight. Man, thank you so much for having me, Scoop. You stay right there. Thank you, everybody. Deb, uh, of course, this yeah. is Skip Happens. Make sure you give us a, a like and a subscribe on YouTube. And Deb's got her country music fan club. Go ahead, Deb. Yeah, give us a like on Facebook and we'll be following Dalton. And Dalton will be following us and we'll be Thank making sure Osmond. we let you know when new music comes out. We'll be pushing it out to all of our members as well. Thank you so, guys so much, man. It's been a Superstar. pleasure. Superstar. Repeat after me, Superstar. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Mm. Stay right there, Dalton. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Have a wonderful evening. Good night. <laughs>